So one of the things that we enjoy so much about this project is just the sheer amount of knowledge that we've had to uh, learn in such a short amount of time. And one of the things we really wanted to explore was how metals interact with each other. And we talked about this before a little bit. We set up a little experiment for ourselves, which is not very scientific, but we put a bunch of metals together in some salt water to see how they interacted with each other. And we do really enjoy sharing this kind of stuff with you guys. So why don't we look and see what we've got? Well, it's a cold, rainy day here, and I can't go work in the woods with the skitter because we're going to get stuck in the mud. And can't go work in the boathouse because we need to do painting, and it's too cold for that. So, we thought it would be a great time to do the Q&A. So here we have all of our jars that we set up a little while back, and they're filled with a homemade salt water solution. And then we put in a bunch of different objects and combinations of objects that you would find in boat building, so different woods and metals. We have our controls, so we have the oak, and then the metals, and then we have our wood with our assorted types of fasteners in them, and then our mixed metals. And today we're going to focus on looking at the mixed metals, and a little while on the road here we'll cut open these wood ones and see what the fasteners inside look like and how they've behaved. But for now we'll put those off to the side and we'll get a closer look at these mixed metals. So here we have all of our metal controls and all of our mixed metals and they're lined up from the least noble to the most noble. And the exception of that is stainless steel, which can kind of move all over the place depending on what exactly that stainless steel is made up of, because it's actually an alloy, so it's a bunch of different kinds. So, if you have something that is not very noble, like mild steel, and you, say, combine it with something that is more noble, like lead, you have two very dissimilar metals, and what happens is the more noble metal basically starts to eat away at the less noble metal. And if we look at some of our mixtures here in a minute, we'll see examples of that. Um, now, if metals are very close to each other, say stainless steel and bronze, they'll be more likely to behave with each other. And bronze and lead are commonly used together because um, they're also fairly similar nobility. They should behave. So if we zoom in on the metals here, we can see that some of them have a significant amount of corrosion, like mild steel. Um, bronze has a little bit. Lead has virtually none, nor does stainless steel. The galvanized steel, the zinc, it does not corrode as quickly as the steel does. Um, zinc in itself is much more inert. So the, the zinc on these steel nails are preventing them from rusting. If you took that zinc off or you damaged that zinc coating, they would start to behave more like this mild steel and it would start to rust. So if you look at the level of corrosion, especially from the mild steel, it's not too severe. And when we switch over and look to the mixed metals, you'll see that that corrosion has definitely been enhanced. Here we have just our mild steel, which is our control, and then we have bronze and steel and lead and steel. And lead and bronze are both significantly more noble than the mild steel. So you can see the levels of corrosion on the steel are much higher in these two than it is just in the straight steel. Now, by comparison, if we bring over the lead and the steel and the bronze and the zinc, you will notice that that chunk of steel, that's that big square piece there, has barely any rust on it at all. Although it's in a bath of salt water with not only bronze, but lead. And the two of which should just be ruthlessly attacking that steel. But they're not really. And the difference in this jar is that we have that zinc. And since the zinc is the least noble metal of them all, the lead and the bronze are drawing from the zinc and they're the zinc is basically protecting the steel. And you've used that a lot in boats where you have to have mixed metals like in an engine or a prop shaft assembly, and you attach zinc anodes to it. And the zinc just eventually disintegrates and you replace it and it's considered a sacrificial part. And it's just there to stop that galvanic action. And in this jar, it's doing that beautifully. So the steel in here with the zinc anode is faring much better than the steel in the other two samples where it doesn't have that anode to be sacrificial and protect it from the more noble metals. So here we have stainless steel and lead and bronze and lead and these are two very 
common methods of attaching uh, lead to a boat. Both the stainless steel and the lead and the bronze and the lead are very similar nobilities, so they get along and they behave quite well. But we'd like to talk about, I guess, stainless steel for a second. Stainless steel. You can see there's virtually no corrosion in either of these jars. Stainless steel with lead, straight stainless steel. The tricky thing about stainless steel is it, become, it comes in a bewildering amount of varieties. So stainless steel is an alloy, and they make it by taking general mild steel and adding bits of this and that and making a different metal out of it. Now, all those different stainless steels, they land all over on the nobility chart, and they also have all different levels of corrosion resistance and toughness and how brittle they are. Um, so if you're going to choose to go stainless steel, you really have a lot of research to do into the stainless steel. Another thing is some of those grades of stainless steel don't behave well with oak. And one of the issues with oak is it has tannins in it and that likes to attack the metal, certain metals. So although if you're going to do a fiberglass boat, for example, and you wanted to do stainless steel bolts with lead and you picked a grade of stainless steel that was similar nobility to lead, you should be good to go. The issue with our boat is it has an oak backbone and that oak combined with the stainless steel, they don't always get along very well. Um, so it's a little bit trickier figuring out which stainless steel to use and some of those newer ones, they just haven't been around that long uh, in comparison to something like lead and bronze. Lead and bronze they've been using in shipbuilding for a very, very, very long time. And although you see a bit of corrosion on here, that's typical with the bronze. It corrodes a little bit on the outside. That corrosion protects it from further corrosion and it stays solid for a really, really long time. And if you don't believe us, a great resource for that is check out Samson Boat Company, who's restoring Tally Ho. And he's been pulling out bronze fasteners from his 100-year-old boat, and some of them are in great shape. Um, and he shows a bunch of other boats that have like bronze clench nails that are really old and are also in great shape. Um, they've got a little bit of corrosion on the outside, but that's it, that's where it stops. So that's why, for us, we're going with bronze and lead, mainly because of, we know that the bronze and the lead will behave really well with the oak in the long run. Cool, so that's it for now, and next time we will pull out all of those wood samples and cut those open, and hopefully we'll see some reaction between the oak and the stainless steel and see if that starts to be a problem. We don't know what grade of stainless steel we have, this experiment's not super scientific, uh, we just grabbed some stainless steel screws we had kicking around, so we don't actually know the grade, but it'll be interesting to see how they behave.